I think I've cracked this topic. Let me tell you why I'm saying that. I know all the exact steps that you need to follow to be able to answer any question. Determine whether your triangle is right angled or not. If it is right angled, then the first thing you should try is to use trig ratio. Sine of theta, cos of theta, and tan of theta. And if trig ratios don't work and it is a right angled triangle, then you can use the theorem of Pythagoras. C squared is equals to B squared plus A squared. This is the first th two things you should be looking at. And if it is not a right angle, the triangle, then we're going to move to the sine rule. This is step number two, if step number one seems to not work. And if the sine rule doesn't work, we're going to use the cosine rule. Right, and if the cosine rule fails, then the area rule is going to work. This is the approach you should be taking. Let's see if it is going to work on this question. Well, we're not seeing. I know it is going to work. Let me show you that it works instead. 7.1, write BF in terms of theta and Y. So let's go ahead and look at BF. BF is this side. It's our triangle right angled. Well, it is not. There is no angle which is equals to 90 degrees. So we cannot use trig ratio or theorem of Pythagoras. The second step is using the sine rule. So let's see if we can apply it. We're looking for BF. BF is opposite angle theta. And then we have side AF, which is opposite angle B of size 30 degrees. As you can see, the sine rule is going to work. So in triangle ABF, we have sine of 30 degrees divided by Y. You see the angle divided by the side opposite. This is equals to sine of theta divided by BF. Let's cross multiply. We're going to get BF multiplied by sine of 30 degrees being equals to Y multiplied by sine of theta. So BF is equals to Y multiplied by sine of theta divided by sine of 30. But sine of 30 is special. So BF is going to be equals to Y sine of theta divided by a half. This is just equals to 2Y sine of theta. Our answer to 7.1. Let's go ahead and look at 7.2. So again, we're looking at our steps. The first step is to determine whether our triangle is right angle or not. DF. DF is a side on triangle DFE. So we're going to use that triangle. So we're going to say that in triangle DEF, it is not the right angle triangle. So we cannot use trig ratios or Theorem of Pythagoras. We're looking for DF. DF is opposite angle alpha. And then we have angle F of size 30 degrees, which is opposite X. So the sine rule is going to work again. Sine of 30 divided by X is equal to sine of alpha divided by DF. Let's cross multiply. Sine of 30 is a half, so we're going to have a half multiplied by df being equals to x sine of alpha. So df, if we divide by a half on both sides, we're going to have 2x sine of alpha. So there we go. We have the size of angle df in terms of alpha and x. 7.3. Prove, hence prove that... BD squared is equals to 4x squared sine alpha squared plus 4y squared sine theta squared. BD squared. Let's go ahead and look at BD. BD is this side right here. If we look at triangle BDF, you will realize that we have a right angled triangle. So we can use theorem of Pythagoras to find the size of BD. We have BF, we determined it, and we also have DF. So we can say that BD squared is equals to DF squared plus BF squared. 
bd squared will be equals to df squared. That is 2x sine of alpha squared plus bf squared. That is 2y sine of theta squared. So bd squared will be equals to 2x squared. That is 4x squared. And then sine of alpha squared plus 2y squared. That will be 4y squared sine of theta squared. So we have proved what we are required to prove. That is 7.3. Let's go ahead and do 7.4. In our equation, we have the variables x and y. So we should be using a triangle that have those variables. Let me just erase all this for the sake of clarity. We have BD squared. We just determined it in the equation above. And BC is 3x and CD is 4x. Our triangle is right angled. So we can go ahead and try using the theorem of Pythagoras. CD is clearly our hypotenuse. So we can say that 4x squared is equals to 3x squared plus bd squared. But we know what bd squared is equals to. But what about 4x squared? 4x squared is just 16x squared being equals to 3x squared, that is 9x squared plus bd squared. bd squared is 4x squared sine of alpha squared plus 4y squared sine of theta squared. Let's take all the terms with x to the left hand side. We have 9x squared and 4x squared sine of alpha squared. If we take that on the left hand side, we're going to have 16x squared minus 9x squared minus 4x squared sine of alpha squared being equals to 4y squared sine of theta squared. So what is 16x squared minus 9x squared? That is 7x squared. And then minus 4x squared sine of alpha squared. This is all equals to 4y squared sine of theta squared. So on the left-hand side, we can take x squared as a common factor. If we do that, we're going to have x squared multiplied by 7 minus 4 sine of alpha squared. This is all equals to 4y squared sine squared of theta. We can divide both sides by 7 minus 4 sine of alpha squared. If we do that, we're going to have x squared being equals to 4y squared sine of theta squared everything divided by 7 minus 4 sine of alpha squared. Taking square root on both sides, we're going to get x being equals to the square root of 4y squared sine theta squared divided by 7 minus 4 sine of alpha squared.